God is moving in this place. Come on, tell them, say, God is moving in this place. How many of y'all really believe God is moving in this place? A few of y'all. How many of y'all really believe God is moving in this place? Uh, some of y'all need to get out of your comfort zone right now. How many of y'all believe God is moving in this place? If I handed you right now, right now, if I handed you a check, some of y'all a check for $10,000, some of y'all would yell so loud with joy, with joy. Look, I heard you feel back. The Phil said, let's see. I think you have seen, brother. I think I've blessed you many times, my brother. I love you, Phil. He's awesome. But the thing is, is, is I, I, I love that. I mean, how many of y'all want to see, Lord, let's see. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to allow money or anything else in my life to out praise my worship for Jesus. The Bible says don't ever let a rock out praise you. And I'm not going to allow anything else to have something that's before my God. My God is too worthy for me not to praise and worship and give him thanks. How many of y'all are grateful for all the things God has done in your life? God truly has been that good. Now, I'm, I'm just being obedient to the, to the Spirit of God. I felt like we needed to, God wanted us to go deeper in worship there. And uh, just being obedient to that, because in my mind, it, the, the flesh side, the Paul side says, hey, you're running out of time. But uh, it, once again, it didn't, I got to practice what I preach. It isn't for me, it's for him. Amen. And God's, God's going get, to get out what needs to get out. And thank God we're in a series and we got plenty of time to do it. Can I get another amen? So somebody say, Pastor, take your time. Amen. We got coffee out there, so, you know, we can take our time, relax, and enjoy what God wants to minister to us today, what he wants to speak to our hearts. I personally want to hear from heaven myself. Even as I am ministering or preaching to others, God says that he will refresh us as we are refreshing them. And we just pray that your spirit move in this place, that you touch every heart in life once again. Lord, I pray even as the word is being spoken, Father, as your word, Father, is being spoken, that there's, there's power, we know, power in the word. You are the, the anointed one. I thank you, Lord, there's power in the word. And I pray as it's being preached, Father God, that people get set free, delivered, Father, and get exactly what needs to be deposited in their life to help them, Father, to grow, to know you more, and to live their life that's pleasing for you. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Wow, I just feel a sweet presence in this place. Whew. Mm. I don't know, I, I just may have to just flow. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Man, isn't, isn't this awesome? Isn't that, what, isn't that what we come here for? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I don't know if I need to lay hands on everybody. Or what? I'm telling you, man. There's power and there's just an anointing here. There's an anointing here right now. There's an anointing here. Man. If you need deliverance from something, just lift your hand real quick. Trust me, I ain't, this is not planned. This is God's plan. Lord, I thank you, Father, for your anointing, your power, your presence that's here. For every hand lifted, Father, I just pray right now, Father, those things, Father, that are hindering, Father, I just pray right now, Lord, Free them in the name of Jesus. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we thank you, your Spirit is here right now, Father. I speak life over them. And I command it, Father, to happen in the name of Jesus, the only name that's above every name. And I thank you, Lord, there's deliverance in the name of Jesus. So I say right now, loose, loose them in the name of Jesus and let them walk in the freedom that Christ gave them in Jesus' name. And if that's you with your hand lifted high, just say, I receive. 
Amen. Can we allow God to do that? Come on, somebody. Remember the power is for a purpose. Amen. How many of y'all care? Do, do y'all still believe in signs, wonders, and miracles? Come on. I come expecting, every time I come into this service, I come expecting, believing God's going to do something. Not only in my life, but I believe it for others. I think the church really honestly, that we, we'd see more signs, wonders, and miracles if we wouldn't just believe for ourselves. And when somebody else gets a miracle, if we rejoice in the miracle that God's given them, I think we'd see more of those miracles in our lives. Can I get an amen? I don't want to veer too far because I'll, I'll get totally away from the message. And so I'm, I'm going to go straight into this word. So tell your neighbor real quickly, say, I'm ready to receive. And we'll get as far as we can get in Jesus' name. I've shared with you that when I mean or when I say on assignment, I'm talking about God's plan, his purpose, his calling for your life. I believe the church is supposed to be on assignment. But it's not just one assignment. It's assignment after assignment after assignment after assignment after assignment after assignment. And when I say the church, how many guys know that means to people? Now, every church may have a specific vision or a mission that God has for that church because of where they're placed or the area that they're in. And ours is to reach and rescue people with God's love. I truly believe there's nothing greater than the love of God. Matter of fact, the Bible says that everything hangs off the love of the law of love. And there is nothing greater. Matter of fact, I think that's the only thing we can seek as believers and never get, never get extreme on or get off track. You can't get off track with love because when you love, love just loves and everybody likes love. Can I get an amen? But ultimately, it's because God is love. Let me keep it biblical. But what, what astounds me and what I, why I believe God has impressed me to take my time with this series and to, to share so much, is, and I've shared with you so we can grow because God wants us to grow up. Many times we want him to show up, but God says, I need you to grow up. And I'll show up. Can I get an amen? How many of y'all feel God's presence this morning? Come on, come on. I feel him right now. <clears throat> but what I'm in awe is, is there's so many people. There's so many people. <laughs> and you hear it all the time. I, I've, seen it, uh, I've seen it on social media. I don't, I don't normally get, like to get on there too much because sometimes when I get on social media, it's a downer, not an upper for me. <laughs> And I, I, I don't need to be depressed. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? I, I, I need encouragement. Come on, somebody. I want to see life. Come on, somebody. I don't want to see all your business. I don't need to know all your business. Because I'm about the Father's business. Can I get an amen? I don't know why we, we have a tendency to want to share our business with everybody. When truthfully, how many guys know some of your business isn't meant to be shared? But that's another subject for another time. So let me leave that alone for now. But that is one of my reasons why I'm not on social media all the time. I like to look at Rescue Church stuff because usually it's positive. Amen. Period. Let me leave that alone and move forward. But you find so many people talking about, whether it's, once again, I've, I've seen it on Christian television. I've, I've seen it on social media. I've seen it everywhere. I've seen it in people talk about how I, they're just like, I'm just, ready for, I'm just ready for the rapture. I'm ready to get out of here. And I thought to myself, and I thought, trust me, a lot of things went through my mind, but pertaining to this series, I thought to myself, wow, are, are there that many Christians that anxious to get to heaven? Don't get me wrong. Trust me. You get a glimpse of that. You ain't going to want to come back. I get it. I get it. I've heard the testimonies time and time again. I've heard it. I've, I've, re I've read my Bible. Man, man, who wouldn't want to be in a place where there's no more sickness, where there's no more disease? There's no more pain, no more suffering. Come on, somebody. You, everybody should love a place like that. Can I get an amen? Now, I don't have the time to get it into all the different heavens that the Bible talks about because many times when we think of heaven, we think of the place. But when the Bible refers to the kingdom of heaven, it's not necessarily talking about a place. It's talking about heaven working in and through you. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within are y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
Meaning we have, we have kingdom influence. We've got something inside of us that the world needs. I said needs. Can I get an amen? And, and so we have that so many times when it talks about the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because God wants, wants the church. Tell your neighbor, that's me. If you're born again, believe if you're a Christian's room, that's you. God, God wants the church to truly be a light to a dark world. He does. He wants us to do that. And so if there's, if there's darkness out there, and how many guys know there is darkness out there? Unless you're walking around like this, how many guys know there's darkness out there? Actually, you have to be like this. Because you hear it and see it every day. That means there's a necessity. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There's a necessity for the church to be the church. I said there is a necessity for the church to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so I thought to myself, we want to get out of here so quick, but yet there's still so much work to be done. Maybe that's why Jesus said there's still a lot to be done to the disciples. There's a lot of work still to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. But if you want to get out of here so quickly, maybe it's because you don't know what your assignment is. If you really knew your assignment, if you knew your purpose and what you were called to do on earth, listen to me, you'd ask God to extend time so you could reach more people for Jesus. Can I get an amen? And if you're really walking your God-given assignment or the purpose of God has placed you for here on earth, listen to me, I can tell you right now, listen to me, it's not going to be about you. It's going to be all about him. It's the Lord, what, what can I do for you? Not just what can you do for me? I'm preaching good right now. So could it be a lot of people want the rapture to come so quickly because they don't know what their assignment is? <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's just a thought that rolls through my mind. That doesn't necessarily mean that you, but I'm, I'm telling you, I believe there are a lot of people in, in the, in, that need to get an understanding, or I even say a revelation, that God has a, an assignment. God has a plan. God has a purpose. Something you're destined to do here on earth. And listen, he doesn't actually, God doesn't even want you to leave this earth until it's fulfilled. He doesn't. And do you know that, that God's hand will be on that as long as you're doing what he's called you to do? Can y'all can y'all just grasp, let me say it this way, can y'all already feel the necessity of why the church needs to operate in the assignment that God's given them on earth? Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody help me out. And everyone has a God-given assignment. We all have that assignment. And so a God-given assignment is this. It's God's preordained plan, purpose, and appointed calling for your life that yields supernatural results. And God created you. He created you with a God-given assignment to make a difference in this world, but also to bring glory and honor to his name. And so I shared that as much as I possibly could last week about how the gift that God has given you, the thing that God has downloaded, the thing that God has deposited in you while you were being formed in your mother's womb. And yes, he, he was putting on flesh while you were being formed in your mother's womb, but he was also, also uh, including the things that you need. He's equipping you, putting everything inside of that you need to fulfill the purpose that he has for you on earth. You have those skills, you have those gifts, you have those talents, but those gifts and those talents were never meant to be used for your glory. They were meant to be used for his glory. And so you see a lot of people today thinking, thinking, thinking. It doesn't mean they're right. Because how many guys know you can think wrong? You can think wrong. And when they think they use their gift and their gift actually gives them success, they think this is what living is all about. But to be truthful, you can be successful at the wrong thing. So you have people in the church applauding people because they're having excess, liking it on Facebook, applauding people all around, applauding me, and you're having such great success. But listen to me, why would you applaud something that brings glory to them and not glory to God? Oh, can I go here this morning? Can I get an amen? In reality, listen to me, their gifts and talents, just like I've just shared, and I shared it with you last Sunday, and I gave you scripture, and there's so much scripture time and time again, where everything God has put in us is supposed to be for his glory, not our glory. That's why even in a church, we don't point people to us, we point people to Jesus. 
Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's not how great our singers are, our worship team are, though I believe they're great people, but it's how great God is in them. Are y'all hearing me? Come on, somebody. And so we want to make a difference in the world with our gifts and talents, but we also want to bring glory to God. And I believe when you're truly making a difference, it will bring honor and glory to Him. Not the difference that you choose, but the difference He chooses. Because a lot of people think they're making a difference, but you're making a difference for the wrong thing. <laughs> Look at our political agendas. And the church gets caught up in that. When really, how many of you guys know, I've shared with you before that this is our governing system. Can I get an amen? This is what we get behind. This is what we support. Not what they say, but what he says. I said, not what they say, but what he says. I said, not but what they say, but what he says. We need more parents. We need more people to get behind what God says. This is a governing system. When Jesus came to the earth, Jesus came not just to heal people, though he, wanted, he is our healer. But Jesus came because how many of you guys know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Remember, I've shared with you the word world there. It means, it's the word cosmos. Yes, it means ungodly multitude, but it also means governing systems. Jesus came to show the world that there's a better system that they're living by. The Roman system wasn't working, but he said God, God's system will work. Even when America's governing system doesn't work, God says, look, go to my system and watch what it can do. Don't pull me out, leave me in. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I ought to get a whole lot more amens up in here. Somebody say, God bless America. <clears throat> so the truth is the reason that for God so loved the world, he's talking about the people, the people. He wants the people. He wants the people to know who he is and know his love to know his governing system, his kingdom system, because how many guys know he is a king? And the king said, I can relate to you even though you may be the president, I'm the king. But let, but let me let you know, I'm the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And just like you may rule over America, I rule over the kingdom of God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so he comes in to show us this, and this to me as the church, we're so supposed to support this. And if we support this, God says, I can change the system but I choose to do it through you, but it only happens when you're on assignment. Are y'all hearing me? Because in reality, the church, let me educate you guys a little bit, just so you guys know. And, and, and let, me, let me back up just a little bit before I even speak about the church. Let me know, in reality, when God created the earth, the earth, you got to understand, was supposed to be a reflection of heaven. Just like, just like God governs heaven, have the heavens. He governs all that. He put Adam on the earth. And how many guys know Adam is supposed to re be a reflection of God? That's why we're creating his image. And so Adam was supposed to rule over the earth. He was supposed to rule and have dominion over, over the earth. He had authority. He was supposed to govern everything that happened on the earth. But when Adam messed up and took from the forbidden fruit, how many guys know he sinned? And sin separated him from God and because he separated in God he no longer had a relationship with God so he lost all his authority all his dominion all his governing power all that dissipated so Jesus said where the first Adam messed up the second Adam can come in which is Jesus and I can put things back on order and get things back on course and I'm going to get him on course but when I leave I'm going to send you the comfort of the Holy Spirit but I need the Holy Spirit to dwell within the church so that power can help them fulfill the purpose which is to continue to change the things that are happening on the earth. So the problem isn't the earth, the problem is with the world, with the governing systems. So if we change the systems, we can change the world. Y'all ain't listening to me. We change it with this. That's why the word will, will last forever. It will endure forever. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So listen, let's don't be so quick to get out of here when there's still work to be done. Because if you are the church, it's time to beat the church and start to live what you profess you believe. So many people say it, but don't live it. We need to live it. And when you live it, you need to live it on assignment. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
living on assignment. So, so let me just get into this. So tell your neighbor real quick, there is a reason you exist. There's a reason you exist. God has an assignment for your life. Once again, there's a reason you're born. There's a reason. Come on, somebody. You want your life to matter. There's a reason why you want this world to be a better place. And I'm going to tell you, the only way the world's going to become a better place is if the church starts living on assignment. Thank you for the claps and the one shout and everything else. But one, I think that we ought to get a little more excited. It's time for us to start living on assignments. <laughs> On assignment, I want to make a difference. I want to bring glory to God with my gifts and talents. I want to, I want to do that with my life. Can I get an amen? Tell you never one more time, there's a reason you exist. Man, there's so much. I want to get all this out. Mm. There's so much. Thank you, Jesus. So number one is this. Remember I told you, the number one reason you exist is to have a personal relationship with God. A personal relationship with God. Mm. You have to know. You have to know who he is, and you have to know who you are before you can walk in what he has created you to do. Y'all didn't hear me. You have to know who he is, and you have to know who you are. Somebody say, you got to know who you are. That's the first step. You got to know who you are before you can walk in what he has created you to do. Many people want to walk in what, but they don't know the who. And they don't even know the who they are. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It is possible. If it wasn't possible, Jesus wouldn't have told us that there are people who say, Lord, 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 I knew you. Did I do all these wonderful things in your name? But Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me. It is possible. It is possible to think that you're doing something for God, but it isn't really what God wants you to do. The key is we will operate in the wrong thing until we really know who he is and who he says we are. But once we know who he is and who we are, he says we are. Now we can operate in what he has called us to do. So tell your neighbor, you got to know who you are. In Christ Jesus. So that's why we got to have that personal relationship with God. And without knowing him, how many guys are you never going to know who you are? And, and I'm going to pause here for a moment because I know I'm not going to complete this. So I'm going to take my time with this. Tell your neighbor real quick and say, Pastor's going to take his time. <clears throat> I'll take my time. You have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. Why am I so empty? Why am I not fulfilled? Why, why do I feel like I'm pulled this way? Why, why, why does my mind always tell me this? Why, why do I feel the guilt? Why do I feel the shame? Why do I feel unworthy? Why do I feel invaluable? invaluable? Why, why do I feel like something I'm not? Why? 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 All these things going on. How many guys know God says, I, I can tell you why. I can tell you, I can tell you why, but you need to know who I am and you need to know who I say you are. Because the truth is you can feel a certain way, but feel wrong. You can even think a certain way and think wrong. So pastor, and this is the question people ask me all the time. So pastor, then why is it there are people who are saved, they're Christians, and yet they still have identity issues? It's not that hard, guys. You can be saved. Your spirit is saved. You're going to make heaven. But listen to me, but not work out your salvation, not really know who you are and who God says you're supposed to be. Meaning I'm saved, I'm going to make heaven, but I don't know his word. And if I don't have a relationship with God or a relationship with this word, how many guys know I'm not going to have a relationship with God? But God reveals himself through the word. And so the more I know the word, the more I know God. And the more I know the word, the more I know who he says I am. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So you can be saved and still have identity issues. <laughs> and when I say identity issues, I'm not just talking about the transgenderism and all that weird stuff that's happening in the world today, though that is weird. And I'm going to go ahead and make a bold statement right now. And I know some of y'all may want to walk out this church. I love you, but I'm here to tell you not what I say, but what God says. God says, that listen to me, I don't make mistakes. I don't make mistakes. I, you are still who I said you are. Here's the thing. Listen to me. You're so, you, your spirit, man, you may be saved, but your mind didn't save. That's why we have to have the renewing of the mind. So you're thinking, listen to me, you can't be a Christian saved going to heaven and you're thinking me wrong. The only way your thinking gets right is when you get the word of God into your because it renews your mind. 
And so you've got to get the Word of God in you so it can renew your mind. As your mind gets renewed, come on now, you begin to walk, talk, and operate who God says you really are. But I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Yeah, but we don't do by feelings. We do by faith. And if you need more faith, then you need more Word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Listen to me. Maybe you need to shut your ears off to all the things that bring doubt, fear, into your ear. You need to cut that out. You need to start listening to things that build your faith. We're supposed to build our holy faith. We're supposed to continue to feed on the word so we can continue to grow into who God has called us to be. Can I get an amen? I've known people that had issues with their identity because they got close to God, that thing got fixed. But we don't want to talk about that because that's against what the world's saying. I, listen to me, listen to me. The, you got to understand the world has a problem. Why are you thinking they're right? They're wrong. God is right. I'm sorry, their, their views, their thinking, well, yeah, but they're different. We've got to love on different. Yeah, but that's the wrong kind of different. The different is supposed to be that we're fools for Christ. That's the different we ought to be applauding. People that go against the world and stand with God. Can I get an amen? That is different. That is harder to do. Matter of fact, Christians are persecuted more than any other religion out there. That's been proven time and time again. So I don't know about you. I'm going to stand by God. I'm going to stand with this word. And people may get offended. People may not like it. But this is the truth. And the truth is the only thing that's going to set them free. So quit feeding the monster, as my wife says. Tell them the truth. And maybe you can set somebody free. Maybe it's your assignment. I don't want that assignment. <laughs> Let's just be honest. I don't want that assignment. I'm, I'm going to get persecuted. But if it's your assignment, God says, my grace will cover you. My grace will take care of everything that you need. Just walk in what I've called and created you to do. Can I get an amen? Are y'all with me on that? Come on, somebody. So remember the number one reason you exist is to have a personal relationship with God. You got to know who he is and who he says you are before you can walk in what he's created you to do. Amen. And how many of you guys know apart from him? I said apart from him, we can do what? Apart from him, we can do nothing. Apart from him, we can do nothing. We know that apart from him, we can do nothing. But why do so many Christians step into something that's apart from him? I'm dropping bombs, I know. I'm dropping faith bombs. I was going to say the F-bomb, but some of y'all might take that wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and just say faith bomb, okay? Uh, some people are like, hey, pastor, what's he doing up there? <laughs> hey, Amen. I'm dropping some faith bombs on you right now. So apart from God, I can do nothing. Your gift will make room for you. It will. It will, it will open a door. Your gift will open the door. And you can cross the threshold and operate it and have some success, but it's apart from God. Why are you doing it? Let's just be honest. You can lie to everybody else, and you can even lie to your pastor. You're probably doing it for the attention. You're probably doing it for the money. I just need a little extra money, Pastor. I'm doing it on the side. But I thought God was your source. I thought he was your source. I thought your trust was in him. Didn't we just sing about that? I trust in God. But apart from him, I can do nothing. Meaning, listen, you can keep doing that, but nothing's going to work out for you. You think you're getting ahead, but actually watch it. Watch, 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 watch people. I've watched people this time and time. They actually get further behind. And, and they're, trying to, they're trying to get ahead here. They're trying to gain traction, but they can never gain traction. And that's why the Bible says that if you're just going after money, it's like you're putting it in a pocket full of holes. And you never get ahead because, listen, me, apart from God, you could do nothing. Can we get that revelation today? Even if I were to close right here, can we just get the revelation that I need my relationship with Jesus because apart from God, I can do nothing? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Apart from God, I can do nothing, nothing. That's why you need Jesus. You need a relationship with him. A lot of people, listen to me, you got to say, my relationship with God is like a marriage. I, I, when I say I do, it's I do. And it's for life. Can I get an amen? It's not momentary. It is a, it's a lifelong commitment. I say I do to you, Jesus. I just don't want to be saved. I want to make you Lord of my life. People just want the fire insurance. Forget that. I, I'm grateful for the fire insurance, but I want life insurance too. 
All the benefits that come from being a believer in Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? I want the blessing. I don't know about you. I want the blessing that is promised to me. Because who I am in Christ Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm joint heirs with Christ. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So I want my relationship with God because I don't know, I know about, I don't know about you. I know apart from God, I can do nothing. I can do nothing. Even when I preach to you, apart from God, I can do nothing. I don't want to do this in my in, in, in the power of my flesh. I want to do this in the power of the Spirit. Where it's not me, but it's Christ in me, the hope of glory people truly see and hear. And if people see here Jesus in me, how many guys know I'm not pointing to me, I'm pointing him to God. And so my gift isn't being used for me, my gift is being used for him. Can I get an amen? So if you're operating in your gift and it isn't pointing people to Jesus, then I'm here to tell you, you're doing it apart from God. And apart from God, you can do nothing. So he doesn't get the glory. So guess what? You're on your own. And then we want to know why all hell breaks loose in our life. It isn't because you're on an assignment. Because when you're on assignment, all, all hell breaks loose. God said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. But when you're off assignment, on your own assignment, God says, my hand's off that. You're on your own. I don't know about you. If I'm going to have to deal with some devils, I'd rather have God on my side. I'm going to say that again. If I have to deal with some devils, I'd rather have God on my side. Can I get an amen up in here, church? Man, I, I, just, I just feel like I might need to go there this morning. So somebody say, go ahead and go. Go there. Go there. What, what happened? Hear me on this. I was a youth pastor, so I, I know these things. And people try to pull the wool over my eyes. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. I've sat in those seats that you're sitting in. I've sat in that sound booth. I've served. People come up with every excuse on why they're not close to God. And the truth is, y'all have heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again. You're as, close as to, you're as close to God as you choose to be. That's the bottom line. Can I get an amen? Not just a period, but I'm going to put an exclamation point there. Amen. That's the bottom line. So quit blaming life. Quit blaming the world. Quit blaming everybody else. Somebody even blame churches. I, I just can't feel the spirit there. I can't feel the spirit. See, there you go by your emotions again. That's crazy. You, you need people to help you get close to God. No, it's a personal relationship. You get close to God because you say, I choose. Somebody say, I choose. I choose. You've got to choose. Can I get an amen? I choose. I choose. I choose. And so what happened to people saying, I'm addicted to Christ? We used to say that youth ministry, I'm addicted to Jesus, I'm addicted to Jesus. Man, what, what happened to that? Listen to me, if you taste it and see that the Lord is good, shouldn't you want me more of it? Let me just put it in, in more modern day terms or more adult terms, I'm hungry for Jesus. I don't mind the extreme sometimes. I think it's good. Some of y'all need to be addicted to Christ. Because some of y'all know it, that y'all can relate to that. Some of y'all were addicted to drugs. You know what that's like when you, I, I, I got to have it, 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 I got to have it. But then when you got deliverance and the very thing you used to have to have, now listen to me, you ought to have the same thing. I got to have God, I got to have God, I got to have God. You ought to be addicted to Christ. I got it. Matter of fact, that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm preaching to you. Because I'm so hungry for God, I can't get enough sometimes. I, I, I come expecting, believing that this is a lifeline. And God is going to, boom, give me what I need. He's going to give me what I need to continue to fulfill what he's called me to do. I, I truly am addicted. And listen to me, I love some of y'all men in here. I love you. You, you are married. I'm going to talk to the married. Why are you married? Why are you married to your job? Some of y'all married to money. I'm going to say it straight up. Can I get an amen? Married to money. You will put your job before your family. That's out of order. And then you want to say, God, look what God blessed me. Look at the money I have. God didn't do that. You did that. Once again, you can't be successful at the wrong thing. So you have a lot of money, but then you lose your marriage. <laughs> what good is that? I'd rather have my marriage and trust God for the money. And now what this is all about, Christianity, we walk by faith. I said, we walk by, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. I walk by faith. Now, I may not see it, but I trust that God will bring it to pass, that God will give me everything I need. I just chase after him, and the blessings will chase after me. Amen. What are we doing? What are we doing? Listen to me, church. I love you so much. What are we doing? Listen to me. Let's get back on assignment. 
why we veered off into so many worldly things and we're acting like the world and then we want to know why there's greater darkness out there. No, 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 no. You should do everything in your power to say, no, I need Jesus. I I put God first before everything. Matter of fact, I'll be honest with you. This is going to shock some of y'all. I put put Jesus before my coffee. And I I love, I was going to say this before anybody tries to say, let me me just help pastor out with this. (laughs) Let me give him a word from heaven. (laughs) I got a word for you. The Lord says, put him first. I'll take it. I put it first. And my wife will tell you, even before my, you, you can hear my machine go up. I have an automatic espresso machine. I've been blessed with that baby. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Before I ever go to that machine, even get near that machine, I go into my prayer closet. And, I, and you know, your spouse will tell on you. My wife will tell you. She'll tell you, that's where I go. I, I, I go, Jesus first. Jesus first. Coffee second. Okay, third. My wife's next. Thank you for the correction, Lord. Amen. Y'all, pr- y'all were praying for me. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Y'all praying for me. Amen. I, I, I just know I ain't going to have time. I'm, I'm going to save this message. I've, I've, I, this will have to wait because I have a good Friday message and an Easter Sunday message. We'll come back to it. But here's where I want to close with because I'm out of time. This is so powerful. When I have a relationship with God, how many guys know Christ now lives inside of me? The hope of glory. So Christ is inside of me, the hope of glory. So that means people, when they look at me, they ought to see Jesus in me. Can I get an amen? And Jesus said, we are called to be what? A light. I share with you before how we're called to be salt, the salt of the earth. We're supposed to bring God flavors to the earth. That's what we're called to do. But he also calls the church to be a city upon a hill, shining bright for the world to what? See. So let me, let me give y'all close with a, a revelation that God gave me. And, and honestly, don't know why I've never preached it till now. But this, this is, it's, 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 it's practical but profound. It's so powerful. We're called to be a light. And what did Jesus say? He says, let your light what? He said, let your light what? Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Tell your neighbor, I'm called to shine. Want to, know, want to know one of your callings? People, I want to know one of my callings. I want to know what I'm purpose to do. Listen to me. It's not just one assignment. There are assignment after assignment after assignment. But let me see. I'm going to tell you right now what the church is called to do. And if you are a Christian in this room, that means you. You are called to? That was weak. You're called to shine. I'm 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 called to be a light. And I'm called to shine. So they can see my deeds, my good deeds, the deeds that not I do, but what Christ does through me. So I can shine to be a light, but he is in the light. So I'm in the light like he is the light. Come on, somebody. And his light is working inside of me. And as long as his light is working inside of me, how many of you guys know I'm called to shine? So like a light bulb that shines in the darkness... Number one, I've shared with you, we need to get brighter and brighter and brighter because I don't know about you. The more I grow in my relationship with God, how many guys know the light ought to get brighter? That means the more I ought to shine. But a light bulb does not have lips. Well, are we we called to share? Are we called to talk? Yeah, we are. And I'm I'm preaching right now. I'm called to use my lips. I'm called to use my tongue to talk about Jesus. But to to be truthful, there's two things here. Number one, you don't ever have an excuse. Listen to me. So I don't have the words. Well, then you don't need the words. Just shine. I don't know what to say to people. I I don't know how to share Jesus. I get out like this. Oh, Jesus. You ain't going to say nothing. Lights don't have lips. Just shine. Well, I want to make a difference in the world. God's given me a word. Now, don't get me wrong. You need a word sometimes. Don't get me wrong. But, but listen to me. If you, you, you always got something prophetic and you don't shine, I'm not going to want to receive what you have to say because I want to see the shine before you give me the word. I ought to get a better clap up in here. God showed me this years ago because there was a time and, and when, I, when I got saved that everybody had a word for you. You couldn't even walk out the door without a word. And I was like, oh, my goodness, they all wrong, but I don't want to tell them, Lord, can you please tell them? And I said, you left because there's no, I left because I had to go to the bathroom. 
it wasn't nothing wrong with me. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay, I get it, all kind of jokes. I'm just having fun. But a light bulb don't have, it just shines. Can we just shine? You know, I think we would change the world if we just shine. Why? Because the brighter we get, how many guys, the less darkness there'll be. Shine, how do I shine? How, you don't need to say, you just need to do it. You don't need to say, you just need to do it. You, listen, even, even when I preach to you, I, I, what good does it do if I have a great word, but I don't live it? I got to shine. When I go out, I got to shine. Open the door for somebody. Just be kind. How many guys know kindness is when you shine? I said kindness is when you, y'all ain't helping me. Shine. Kindness is when you what? Shine. Open a door for an elderly person. That's causing you to shine. You'll bless that person like, wow, that little boy has good manners. Mom and dad did a great job. But it's Jesus in them. You're just shining. Can I get any man? You, still, you see somebody in need, you don't have to say nothing. You don't have to advertise. Look, I'm going to go ahead and bless you with seed. I'm going to let everybody know on Facebook, everything. And just go over there and say, hey, can you get this to him and honest, Billy? I don't, I don't need everybody to know. Why? Because I'm just going to what? I'm just going to what? Shine, shine, shine. You know, when you shine, people are attracted to light. If people are running away from you and you're a Christian, Maybe it's because you're not saying the right thing. Maybe you need to quit saying and just start living. And just shine. Tell the person next to you, you just need to shine. Need to shine, need to shine. You need to shine. You, you see somebody, one time, Becky and I was years ago, we, we walked into a store and this lady just walked up to me and I didn't have to tell her I was a pastor. She said, you're a pastor, right? I didn't go in there, hey, everybody, I'm a pastor. I'm a born again believer, blood pot and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Words, 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 words. What, what? They're going blood by, boy, that boy's in the cult. What's all that mean? Christianity, church talk. And, and can I be real with you? Watch this. And I don't have the time. God, if I had the time. Watch. How many, I, I'm telling you I'm, where I was going to go, so I'll just go there. But listen, you got to understand, study Jesus' life. Aren't we supposed to follow in the footsteps of Jesus? So you could try to do whatever you want. Well, what about this scripture? What about this? What is this? Listen to me. They're all supposed to weave, knit, fit together. And if I had the time, I, I actually have them all lined out. And I'm going to show you how they weave, knit, fit together. And I'm here to tell you right now, it isn't always, listen to me, it's not even always even how poetic, how, powerfully you, how powerful you may sound in your words or in your speech. It's how well you shine. And if you study Jesus' life, you will find that he shined everywhere he went. Sometimes he never even said a word. Never even said a word, but just shined. Need prayer? Okay. Be healed. Just be healed. Some of y'all like, man, a prayer like that. Or you should at least pray over me for 15 minutes. Just be healed. What's wrong with just be healed in Jesus' name? See, we want to feel something and not face something. God preaching. I got to feel it. No, you need to faith it. I believe what they said. It doesn't matter if it's a 10-minute prayer or a two-minute prayer. I faith it and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. When my wife got supernaturally healed, I'm going to say instantaneously healed, it was less than 30 seconds. Some of y'all be like, I'm disappointed. This should have been a five-minute prayer. When you need healing, you don't care if it's a two-second prayer. You just said, I just need a healing. Can I get an amen? I mean, I could tell you, it was, it was less than 30 seconds. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Boom, she was healed. Amen. Why? Because I wasn't there to give her many words. I was there just to shine. Somebody say, just shine. Church, if we would just shine, then maybe we'd be a city set upon a hill, shining bright for the world to see. A city set upon a hill, living at a different level, living at a different standard, setting upon a hill for the world to see on assignments called to shine. And the brighter we get, the less darkness we see. But all I need to do is just what? Shine. I'm done in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Did y'all receive this morning? Can I get an amen? Amen. God, I just, this is going to be a, a lengthy series, but I believe it needs to be shared. Amen. So let me close with this. If you're in here right now and you feel distant from the Lord, Sebastian, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. 
I feel distant. I feel distant. I, I want. I want to get closer to God. I, I choose that now. I choose that now. I, I want to get close to God. I want. To, I want to make sure I'm heaven bound. I don't want to backslide. I want to know what, what I'm called to do. I want to just. I want to be the church. I. I, I want to live for Jesus. If you're, you're never given your life to Christ and say, I don't know if I'm going to make heaven. I want you to know. Listen to me. That you're here by divine appointment. You're here by, by divine appointment. And I'm here to tell you, if you're watching online too, please text the number at the bottom of the screen and say, and, and, I, I'll, and, and in the chat box put, I surrender because I want you to know, listen to me, you can't make heaven because of what Jesus did for you through the death, burial, and resurrection. And we're about to celebrate that this come Easter Sunday. So if you're in here right now, you want to make sure you're heaven bound or you're backslidden, I want to pray for you now. Whether you're watching our line in the room, if that's you, can you lift your hands right now towards heaven? Just lift your hands to heaven if that's you. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to know. I don't know that I know. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all can lower your hands. You want to make sure you want to know. Don't gamble with eternal life. Listen to me. You want to know where you're going to spend or where you're going to be. It's either heaven or hell. Choose heaven. Choose life. Choose Jesus. Surrender your all to him today. Once again, if that's you, lift your hand towards heaven. I'm going to pray for you. Lift your hands high. Lift your hands high. Let them know you're not ashamed of the name of Jesus. Church, I'm going to ask you to join with me as I lead them in this prayer. Everybody repeat after me. Say, dear Lord, today I surrender my life to you. Come into my life. Make me new. Help me to live for you every day. In every way, I believe by your grace, I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give them a hand. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so good.